Hello and welcome to Weekly MTG, the only news show coming to you from inside the building. Paul's coming from inside the house, you guys. Always, always. Come from inside, inside the house. Uh, you'll notice today we have many, many things yeah. displayed around us. Different setup today. Yeah, because Steve, what comes after Thanksgiving? Well, that would be the holiday season, Blake, where people like to give their loved ones gifts, or so I'm told. Nobody ever gets me a gift. Sometimes they just like buying things for themselves. Too. Occasionally, yeah. Yeah. Like in those news stories, right, where they'll be like, you know, the holidays are a great time to uh, to look at those look at those sales but oftentimes people will take advantage of them treat just yourself. to just to treat yourself yeah but the spirit of this show is giving to others yes. so yes. uh today we're gonna walk through uh some different magic related gifts that you can give people we're gonna kind of categorize them yeah. and, and give you a little bit more information that way got some nice graphics some uh and some things that you may not be aware even exist yeah. we'll see uh but first steve's gonna do the news we do have some news this week the biggest piece of news was for competitive Magic players in some ways because the Bannon Restricted announcement went up on Monday this week. Let's take a look at the graphic. There were a lot of casualties, especially in Standard. Uh, the beloved Oko Thief of Crowns, Once Upon a Time, <laughs> and Veil vale of Summer, all banned in Standard, uh, as well as Brawl. Oko was banned in Brawl, but uh, Standard has a pretty big shakeup here. These were a big part of the metagame. Saw a lot of those cards, in fact, all three of them in the... Uh, top eight of Mythic Championship 6 in Richmond. So Standard's definitely going to get a shake up here. Definitely going to see some new decks as a new meta emerges after the these bannings happen. Yeah, you might have gotten a first look at it with the Twitch Rivals tournament that happened That's right. on Tuesday and Wednesday, which is really entertaining. One thing Twitch Rivals does not have, however, are Legacy and Vintage. Uh, Legacy Renin 6 is now banned. And in Vintage, Narset Parter of Veils is restricted. Very powerful Three mana, Planeswalker card in Vintage, uh, prevents your opponent from drawing extra cards. That seems like it might be okay in a format like Vintage. Narset makes me both happy and angry. It That, that is saying something uh, for you, the, <laughs> the consummate blue player here at this news desk, uh, such as it is. There were a couple of other news bits other than the banned and restricted list. We have the MPL Emerald Division, which was the final division to play in the MPL splits for Eldrain. Let's take a look at the bracket. Upper finals were Car Carlos Romao versus Brad Nelson. Carlos took that 2-0 to advance to the grand finals with Marcio Carvalho uh, coming from behind in the lower semifinals uh, to advance to the finals and the grand finals and actually winning out against Carlos 2-0. So Marcio will grab that uh, coveted day two bye for Mythic Championship 7. Yeah, really impressive run by him to make it through three rounds. Any one of which could have sunk him, but pretty uh, yeah. pretty crazy. I mean, you, every, any any bracket for the MPL splits is going to be pretty stacked, especially right. top four bracket. You got some of the best players in the world in the MPL competing for these day two buys at the Mythic Championship, and uh, yeah, this top four was no exception. Would uh, I would not relish coming in in the lower semifinals and having to win three matches straight against some of the best in the world, but clearly Marcio did uh, did a great job there, managed to get all the way towards the end, and managed to 2-0 his final, so he uh, he definitely earned his way into that day two of Mythic Championship 7, and we'll see how Marcio does at that event later on. Speaking of Mythic Championship 7, the uh, challenger list for the MPL, uh, it's not for the MPL, I'm sorry, the, not the non-MPL players, yep. uh, the challenger list went up on magic.gg today. So if you're interested in seeing which of the 36 players that are not MPL that'll be challenging them for tournament supremacy, you can check that out on magic.gg, see the full list of 36. You'll probably see some names that you recognize. Absolutely. You'll see, uh, for example, Hall of Famer Gabriel Nassif is coming back because he was a top four challenger in the last Mythic Championship, which earned him a a rebuy, as it were, on uh, on another Mythic Championship. Yeah, and uh, uh, some names to watch, uh, like Chris Kvartek, who mm -hmm. has uh, really been making a ton of appearances at Mythic Championships lately, and yeah. Seven is going to be no exception. So Chris will be there. Uh, there. There are a lot of different names on there. Definitely encourage you to check it out on magic.gg. Uh, but for now, we're going to talk through some stuff. We've got stuff. We've got stuff. So it's much really of it. Cool. So a lot of this, you know, a lot of this is going to run the gamut from this, the you know our main product lines that you've almost certainly seen. Some of which we reviewed on this show. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we were going through all this before, and we're like, oh, we already unboxed that, and we already unboxed that over there. Um, but then we've also got some some cool stuff that you might not be aware of. So yeah. Looking so, forward to it. Yeah, so let's let's start with uh, kind of some some magic stuff that's good for groups or families or you know 
people who want to play with more than just one opponent sitting right. across whether, the table. Right, whether you're a magic human that has a lot of other non-magic humans in your life that you just want to share the game with yep. or share the experience with, or, you know, if, uh, if you do get together with your friends a lot and sometimes you just don't want to commit to something as long as a commander game or something yeah. like that, yeah. Uh, so the first one uh, just came out, and actually, see if you want to grab it. Absolutely. So Here this is go. Game Night. So this is the second one of we, these we've released. We released one last year as well. And so this is a multiplayer box meant to start a game immediately out of the box. So you open it up, you can play multiplayer right out of there. There are five decks. Uh, it usually goes for around $30, depending on when and where you get it. Um, but it's really great for casual groups, for families to just literally open up and immediately start playing. Well, one of the great things about Game Night is that it does scale, right? There are mm -hmm. five decks in here. You can play two-player game, yep. three-player game, four-player game, five-player game. Probably not more than that because there are only five decks in here. But, uh, you know, you can... Once you get really familiar with them, I've heard of people mixing and matching the decks mm -hmm. a little bit to make, you know, uh, five two-color decks yeah. or, you know, more than that. So... You know, it's, uh, it's a good time. It's a good way to get people into the game and a good way to spend an evening just yeah. playing some Magic with friends. And we did, uh, if you want to see an unboxing of this, we did one a, gosh, a, a while month ago. ago? Something a month like and that. A half ago. Yeah. One of our previous shows, we did an, unbo we did an unboxing show, and, and one of the products we unboxed was Game Night. So mm -hmm. if you want to get a look at it, uh, I guess search through our... We have archives. Our, our, we They're have there. archives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've been around You're for a bit You're all smart now. people. You know how yeah. to do that. You guys know how to internet. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Steve, what's next? Uh, well, this is a... Uh, Blake, have you ever played the, uh, the the social deduction game such as... Uh, you like Werewolf, I think it's called. Yeah. Or, or, uh, so we, we have a version of that from our partners at WizKids. It's called Ravnica Inquisition. Ooh. And uh, thank you, Sean, for cutting to the, uh, to the shot of the box so that I don't have to pick it up. Uh, Ravnica Inquisition is a social deduction game that's set on Ravnica, Magic the Gathering Plane of Ravnica. Uh, and you get to join the Gate Watch or pledge your loyalty to, of course, the Dragon God himself, Nicol Bolas. Mm -hmm. uh, we remember how that played out in uh, in War of the Spark, but, you know, who knows? It might turn out differently this time. Bolas could win. Uh, you know, this is going to be uh, $14.99, available at uh, game stores mm -hmm. and Amazon. It's, uh, as I mentioned, by our partners at WizKids. I got to test this game when it was in its early stages. A lot of fun. Uh, very cool way to add a little bit of magic flair to those social deduction games. If you're playing Steve, he's Bolas's agent. Almost he's always. He's always Bolas's agent. Almost just, always. You don't even need to like deduce anything. Just <laughs> yeah. snap it off in the first turn. And then we just go to another game, yeah. and it's over really quickly. It's and, super easy. And there, Steve is also yeah. Bolas's I, agent. I am, always, I am always a Bolas agent. It's true. <laughs> um, next up, if you uh, have some, some groups or some friends who... Uh, are a little further along the pipeline in Magic. Uh, maybe they already know how to play or have played a couple times before. Uh, the Commander decks are a great place to start. Yeah, so we'll move, move that, position yeah. over and, yeah, Commander. Uh, so there are, these are the versions that are currently out. Of course, we've been putting these out every year for a while now. Uh, but Commander 2019 decks, there are four of them. Uh, these four are great to play right out of the box, right against each other. Yeah. Um, that's, I've actually, you know, I'm, I'm a big commander player. I have something like 16 decks at home. I don't know. Uh, but I always, as much as I can, try to keep uh, as many of these decks together as I can. I literally just have a box yeah. of uh, commander decks from years past. And when we have friends over and we want to just play a, a four-player game, you know, my wife is uh, relatively new to Magic but knows how to play, enjoys the social aspect of it. We'll just break these out and we'll, uh, we'll play against each other. Right out of the box, they play really well. They play, the power level's pretty matched against each other. There are a lot of conversations now about matching power level and commander. Well, we've done the work for you. Uh, so these go somewhere between $30, $35 usually, uh, again, depending on where you get them. And when, um, and yeah, those are available at, at local game stores, at uh, big box stores. They're available kind of all over the place. Yeah, and I'm I'm a particular fan of uh, of these. We uh, the team did a creative team did a great job uh, putting some some new new faces in there, mm -hmm. uh, a couple of old faces too. Yeah. So just uh, it doesn't matter how you like to engage with Magic, but if you do enjoy Commander, uh, you know this is this is a great product for you. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, next up. Let's talk fashion. Yeah, maybe. we are. I would argue that we are among the most fashionable people on this show most well, weeks. Yeah, this show. Uh, we are. We are certainly among the most fashionable. We're people at least on this top show. 
three. At least any given week, we're top Sean, three. Sean, yeah. Steve, because yeah. he wears a blazer. That's really the only reason. Then, then me Blake, yeah. Wearing one of my three shirts. But, but that we're I all, we're all at least in the top three, and I think yeah. uh, I think you can you can take our recommendation for any fashion products because of how on Very the cutting seriously. edge of fan fashion Very we are. Very seriously. Uh, in all seriousness, we do have some pretty <laughs> cool magic products for those yeah. that are looking to. to Enhance their wardrobe. Yeah. Uh, such as the lovely retro magic shirt that you're wearing right now. I'm Blake. wearing. So you can see this is the the. It's hard to say old magic logo because we. It's I'd still say on classic. The, back of it, the classic. The classic magic, magic logo. logo. Yeah. Uh, so it has this on the front. And what does it have on that, the back? Blake? What does it have on the back? I'm gonna do. I'm gonna yeah. do this little model. Oh. Like, oh, it's look got some, at that. some old cards. This is the retro magic yeah. T-shirt. Uh, there is a limited quantity of these, so uh, if you are interested in getting one, I would I would ask you to act quickly if you want to get this as a gift or for yourself. If you act now. Um, it is available now at Boxed Lunch stores and online. You can find that at boxlunch.com, mm -hmm. B-O-X-L-U-N-C-H.com, and uh, there is it is the Magic the Gathering t-shirt. And it is an exclu exclusive to Boxed Lunch. Yeah. So, and did you uh, already say $28? $28. $28. But, but it, I have a note here that they're currently on sale. Ooh, so if you check the website, they might be less than that. All right. Well, that's cool. Again, limited quantity there uh, by uh, and, and made and distributed, I believe, by our friends at Box Lunch. Yeah, which is actually a really cool store. We have one at the mall near us here. That's and I've right. Been there a few times. Yeah. They've got a lot of cool stuff. So that's uh, that is that is a thing that you can get. You can get your your classic magic on with some cool cards and old frames on the back. Uh, also, something that really took off when they announced that it, it was happening are these wild bangerang leggings and skirts. That Steve refused to I wear did. I refused on the to wear show. Them because I didn't think that I would be able to do them justice. I think I think uh, it would have looked great in these. So there are a, a wild array, a vast array of yes. these wild bangerang leggings and dresses in various, uh, you know, character uh, character related some designs, planeswalker symbol symbol designs. We have uh, we have some great uh, sorry skirts is what I what I what I have here. Well, there are also so there are leggings and skirts and, skirts yep. and uh, dresses in fact. So here's a Liliana dress. Nice, like Liliana vest. We've got but, some you more know, plain walker dress. symbols over uh, here. I love the detail that they put on this. You can see the chain veil just like hanging mm -hmm. hanging there. That's really great. And then there's a uh, I think this is a Joyra dress actually, Joyra of the two. Yeah, look at that. And, you know, they've got some uh, lighter touches on. So this one, it you can't really see it, uh, but it's just, it's got some shapes. It's, it's a better view. It's got still some shapes. See. Got some uh, colors. The, the darker colors, though, that's actually the Planeswalker symbol. Yeah. So it's kind of a light touch where, like, you can wear this, and it's not out there, but someone who knows looks at it like, and goes, ah. oh, oh, yeah, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, I got gotcha. you. I, I get it, it now. I see yeah. it there. Whereas this is more like, oh, you got Planeswalker symbols all over you. Yeah. Yeah, you're out there. You, you are know what you're doing. And uh, and these are all, like I said, these are all available at wildbangarang.com. That's W-I-L-D-B-A-N-G-A-R-A-N-G.com. Uh, slash collections. Slash, slash magic, magic dash the dash gathering. Yeah. Uh, yeah, these these made quite a stir when they, they were announced on Wild Bangarang they social media. They basically broke the internet that day. It was pretty crazy uh, and awesome that... You know, our our fans are looking for ways that they can, as I said, enhance their wardrobe in a magical way. Yeah. And uh, these are products that are definitely available to folks. So, so um, if you'd like to see Steve wear them, <laughs> uh, like or comment. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, and we also have some Throne of Eldraine. I'm actually wearing a Throne of Eldraine shirt right yeah, now. Yeah, we've got a couple here. Yeah. Steve will stand up and model. Uh, there are there is no there is no back to this. The back is just blank. <laughs> yeah, uh, there are a bunch of Eldraine related shirts available. This one has got everyone's favorite gingerbread person. Uh, it says "No crumbs, no glory," uh, and then Steve's has the apple being held out from the witch's hand, yep. the tempting witch hand, the tempting as it were. witch. Yeah. and then this one, this one's kind of cool. Uh, oh, I get it. It is that's good. It is a wolf. And then at the bottom, three pigs crossed out. It's like a. You don't it, have to be a magic fan to get this. No, one. that's that's a very that's a good fairy tale. Really, it's that's kind of dark. Yeah. But it's clearly yeah. clearly wicked wolf, clearly uh, going after the wolf's quarry boar tokens. Yeah, right? so clearly. you can get all of these Eldraine shirts. 
uh, on our Amazon storefront. Yes. So Amazon.com slash MTGs. That's actually a place where you can go to get a lot of magic stuff, but specifically, that's our storefront for magic apparel. So go there if you want to check out the Eldraine shirts. Yeah. Uh, now, if, if fashion's not your thing, even though it's clearly clearly a, we are clearly we are our close thing, horses. That's Sean, that is, is that the right term. That's close that's, horse. Yeah, that's okay. Close sure. horses. Um, uh, but maybe you want to get something for a new magic player. Maybe you want them to be a new magic yeah. player, and so you want to entice them a little bit. We got some good stuff there. So uh, next up is the spell slinger starter. Yeah, kit. spell slinger starter kit. Here we go. Right here. So that this is a good way to get your friends into magic. So you know, it's it's kind of a little inside. I want you to play magic with me, so I bought you this gift. <laughs> Look um, at this gift for you. That's actually for me. <laughs> yeah. So these <laughs> these normally sell for around ten dollars. Again, depending on where and when you find them. Um, and they're a great way. It's got two decks. They're pre-shuffled. You literally open it up. There is a rules guidebook that says, here's the steps of the turn, here's what to do, and they kind of take you through uh, the first step. So you never want to introduce someone playing magic with like, shuffle up, and you need to mulligan yeah. your first hand ever. And Feels then you bad. have to explain what mulliganing is. Right. And that just goes down a rabbit hole. We've all, hey, we've all been there, right? We when we've been trying been to there. teach somebody well, how to play magic. Well, back in my day, <laughs> which was a long time ago, <laughs> it was just shuffle up and... It, Pick your hand. You what, know, Blake, you, what Blake you, is trying to say is he's super old. Yeah, I'm super old. To say. Uh, but what's great about these is you just you literally open it up and you begin playing. And you begin teaching someone how to play or learning how to play, and it's great for that. So people might recognize the packaging on the Spellslinger uh, starter kit. We've done it before in a different form. Uh, this, is, this is a new version of it. I think it bears saying... Uh, it does come with two 60-card decks, ready-to-play 60-card decks. Mm -hmm. uh, the, they have front-facing foils from, actually, Corset 2020. Yep. Uh, Dracoseth Maw of Flames and uh, Safara Sky's Blade. So a red deck and a white deck. Yep. And uh, it comes with two spin-down life counters. It comes with this uh, two quick customized quick start guides, mm -hmm. right? Uh, a rule book for magic, and I think what's one of the most exciting things about this is that there is a code to unlock both decks in Magic the Gathering Arena. Mm -hmm. So you get, uh, you get everything to learn how to play, and then if you want, you can play the same deck once you've gotten used to it on Magic Arena. Well, not only that, Magic yeah. Arena is a really great way to learn how to play. So one thing you can do is open this up, get the code, jump on Arena, go through the tutorial, mm -hmm. get the decks, play around with it there, and then you've got the decks right there to continue playing and learning how to play exactly. uh, on tabletop. Exactly. Uh, next up, uh, we've got the Throne of Eldraine Planeswalker deck. Yeah, these are these are a product that have been around for some time since Kaladesh, I for think. For a while, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we've got two of them here. We've got uh, the Rowan flavor, and we've got Oko the Trickster flavor. Um, both are headlined by a Planeswalker, which uh, new players love. And uh, this is not the Oko that Steve was talking about at the beginning. Of the no, this is legal and standard yeah, if you want to play this Oko legal and legal. And standard. Um, but both of these are specially designed Planeswalkers for these decks and for new players. Um, again, like the Spellslinger Starter Kit, these are ready to go right out of the box. Right. And again, they're at a great power level to play against each other. And also, if you have previous Planeswalker decks, they're great to play against those too. The power level is generally the same. So if you have one from uh, the core set or from sets past, you can buy your friend one of these and you can pretty much be ready to battle. And these also have a code for uh, the same deck product on Magic the Gathering Arena. Yep. The uh, the version that you can you can pick up and give to a buddy or uh, get for yourself also comes with two booster packs of Throne of Eldrain. Yeah. So you can open those up, customize your deck a little bit further, and mm -hmm. sort of be on your pathway towards uh, you know playing that 60 card deck in standard. Yep. You can go to you can go to Friday Night Magic and say, hey, I'm playing Oko in standard. They'll be like, it's banned. And you'll be like, no, it's no, not. No, no. Not this version. Uh, not this version. Not no, no, no. This no. version, uh, and those usually go for somewhere between twelve and fifteen dollars. Yeah. Yep. No. Uh, next up, uh, if you've got someone who is, you know, it, it's in our new to magic section, but honestly, this is good for. I this want is. One of these. I like. I like this a lot. So this is the uh, Magic the Ga Gathering 2020 calendar. Uh, this, and for those of you that don't know what a calendar is. Uh, it's Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Let's talk down to our audience. Yeah. For those of you that don't know what a calendar is, it's that thing where you put pasta <laughs> into it and then put water over it, and then it strains the water out. Yeah, oh God. Okay. Bronze calendar. Mm, uh, God. That was a joke for all of you unglued fans out there. Uh, Magic the Gathering 16-month calendar. Why 16 months? So that you can buy the calendar a little bit in advance uh, before the year is over. 
and you can start tracking the dates right away. So on the back, you can, uh, we'll go to, Sean, if we can go to the, the close up. On the back, you can see all the art that was used in for all the months. You've got Bolas, you've got Narset, you've got, you know, uh, Garrick, all of these, all of these stalwarts of, uh, of mm -hmm. Planeswalker characters. Uh, 16 of them, in fact, one for each month that is available on this calendar. So you can get it now. It'll go up to the end of the year and then start the new year off fresh yeah. in January 2020. Uh, and you can get these on Walmart.com or Calendars.com, uh, and they go for $14.99. All right. So I'm going to get one of those. Yeah, those they're, are... they're great. I need one for, for my desk in here so everyone can see how much of a Magic fan I am here in the office. Yeah. Yeah. Because nobody important. knows that already. Steve. Nobody knows that. No, nobody it's, is it's aware. The, it's the biggest, best secret that I've kept it's while being in this building. That I'm actually a really big fan of magic. So, uh, next up, we have a couple items that we've uh, we've bucketed under for the collector. Yeah. Uh, in part because it's right in the name of the product. Right. Yeah. And we're, we we are also we're collectors. not being subtle about yeah. this. All of us, all of us here on the couch, we are also collectors. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, so for Thorn of Eldrain, we started something new called the Throne of Eldraine Collector Booster. You may already be familiar with these. We've certainly talked about them on this show. Uh, but these are some pretty great stocking stuffers yeah. for the Magic fan in your life uh, because they are full of shiny, special, and rare versions of cards from Throne of Eldraine. That's so, true. Uh, you'll get nine foil commons and uncommons. Yep. Uh, you'll get a rare foil or mythic. You get one ultimate. Uh, one extended frame, extended frame yep. card. Uh, then there is also the uh, ancillary, ancillary slot. Yeah, thank you. You're Steve, welcome. Steve, you're welcome for that. Uh, but yeah, there's uh, some cards you can with designs that you can only get in these packs. The right. cards themselves functionally can be found in Thorn of Eldraine, but the extended art, um, some of the foil, now the planeswalkers you can find in regular packs. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, but the, uh, notably, if you if you're a big fan of those storybook showcase cards, mm -hmm. those uh, those storybook frame that's alternate the other art slot. cards. Thank you. Uh, this is the only these packs are the only place where you can find the I believe foil uh, the the non foil common uh, showcase storybook cards. So if you like if you want some of those non foil uh, Rimrock Knights, Beanstalk Giants. Uh, Beanstalk Giant is uncommon. Uh, ah. Yeah. Ah. If it were common, that card would be ridiculous, Blake. Mm. It'd be, it's still pretty ridiculous. But, you know, you you got your Rimrock Knights, your Fairy Guide Mothers, you mm -hmm. know, stuff like that. If you want some of that gorgeous art in non-foil, this is the only place that you can find it. Yep, yeah, absolutely. Uh, now, my actual favorite product that we're talking about today is the gift edition of the Throne of Eldraine bundle. Okay. So, for every set, we do a bundle. Right. So, a bundle contains uh, a bunch of packs basic lands. Uh, depending on the set, it might contain special lands or it might contain foil lands. Uh, it, it differs each time. But the cool th thing about the gift edition of the Throne of Eldraine bundle uh, is that it, it is basically the regular bundle plus. Yes. Uh, and there there's a lot of plus here, I feel like. Yeah. the uh, So we... For those that haven't gotten a bundle in a while, we recently reimagined what the spin down light counter die looks like. It's a lot bigger now when it comes with the bundle. It's not the same one that you get in your pre-release kit. Yeah, it's it's bigger. It's um, heftier. It's heftier. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good word for it. It's got some weight to it. Yeah. You know? uh, so there is a very special version of that oversized uh, spin down life counter, that mm -hmm. twenty sided die. Uh, in this gift edition, it is a it's a gorgeous looking uh, purple. Purple, like almost clear purple die uh, with silver, uh, silver numbers yep. and the set symbol on it. Again, we unboxed this in that earlier yes. show of unboxing. So if you want to check out the VOD of that show, whenever it was, it yeah. was at some <laughs> point in time. Uh, we show off the dice in, the, in there, and it's yeah. it's pretty cool. It's nice. It's nice. Yeah. You know the uh, but the biggest. The biggest differences between this and the traditional bundle that you'll get mm. uh, at your local game store or at a big box store, wherever you get your bundles, uh, is that it has a different design on the box. So That's the, not the biggest difference, Steve. It's one it of is, the biggest it is, differences. It's it is the, the biggest, biggest difference cosmetic difference. It, the biggest difference is it comes with a collector booster. It does booster. come with a collector booster. I was burying the lead a little <laughs> bit there. It comes with a collector booster, which we just mentioned. Mm -hmm. We showed you a few of. But... Uh, you know, if you if you are looking for a gift yeah. for somebody, this comes with ten regular Throne of Eldraine boosters. Yep. And one collector, collector booster, booster. That special oversized spin down mm -hmm. die. Uh, 
a different version of the bundle box that Keep is doing this from memory. That is foil. Yep. Uh, Check. And it comes yeah, the with the box itself is foil. It comes with a and and it comes with all the other things that a regular bundle would come with, which includes the alternate art Piper of the Swarm, mm -hmm. which is also foil. Yeah. And the twenty foil basic lands and the twenty non foil basic lands. Yes. Yeah. Correct. Good job, Steve. You yeah. passed the quiz. I did. I did. Yeah. We did it. Uh, so yeah, that's I. I'm a big fan of that product. I I like having those bundle boxes around just to store cards or to mm -hmm. store decks or to you know throw in a bag, take with me with, with some deck boxes in it for commander decks or yep. standard decks or what have you. So uh, and this one, this one's just gorgeous, man. Uh, seriously, check out the unboxing that we did of the uh, on that week that on happened that week before. that happened of the Throne of Eldraine uh, gift edition bundle. <laughs> Bundle gift edition. All right. Uh, finally, um, we want to give a spotlight to a book we haven't talked about much. Yeah. Uh, but it's available now in bookstores and online. So this is uh, called Rise of the Gatewatch, A Visual History. So uh, I'm just going to read the inside of the jacket Ooh, to you. because it's Story time with Blake. The purpose of this inside of the jacket is to actually describe it to you. So, you know, over the course of its 25-year history, Magic the Gathering, the world's first and most popular trading card game, has redefined the fantasy genre through its exploration of diverse, fantastic worlds. And traversing those worlds are planeswalkers, heroes who have, are planeswalkers, heroes who have sworn to defend the multiverse from harm. Uh, Magic the Gathering Rise of the Gatewatch is a visual history and celebration of Magic's first team of planeswalkers. So then it goes through who the Gatewatch are, their history. Uh, so you see a lot of stuff like, here are some Nyssa cards, and here's uh, art stylings around Jace, and here's more art stylings around Jace. So this is, a, this is a really great book for people that like to take a peek behind the curtain of design. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of really cool concept sketches in yep. there. Uh, some stuff that we've showed off on daily MTG in the past that mm -hmm. hasn't really been seen or collected since. Yep. Uh, some stuff that has never been seen, from what I understand, yep. uh, until this book. So it's a really great opportunity for you to see the different expressions of the different characters that are in Magic, specifically yep. the Gatewatch. And, uh, and it's a really cool way to see what a rich history these characters have. Yeah. You know? Well, not only that, like, it's just cool to get... Like, this is uh, Liliana Vess, Shadows Over Innistrad, uh, costume, concept, and art. So it's just going through what does her costume look like? What are the different shades yeah. that are used? So uh, it's great for artists in your life. It's great for people who enjoy the backstory of the Gatewatch. You'll see, again, I, I keep flipping to the J section. I, I wonder why. why. Um, but, you know, each section starts off with the description of who the character is, uh, a little bit of their backstory, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so you can get, the, it's uh, an Abrams book. So yep. you can get it at Abram, abramsbooks.com uh, or in bookstores, basically anywhere. I've definitely seen this on shelves in uh, in local bookstores before. So. Yep. Uh, it goes for about usually around $19.99. Uh, pretty pretty cool piece uh, in addition to, for people who like things in addition to just playing the game. Yeah, and uh, it obviously there's this lovely dust jacket that's on it, but there, there's a really cool matte finish mm -hmm. uh, cover underneath that uh, underneath that dust jacket that has some cool imagery on it as yeah. well. So uh, you'll, you'll get to see a lot of promotional pieces in there, things that uh, you know weren't necessarily card art, but were, uh, were different expressions of the character, yeah. which was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then something we didn't talk about mm. and still aren't going to, mm. uh, but Social has been teasing something called Secret Layer. Oh, yeah. Lately. Yeah. Uh, so I've seen that. That's, uh, you'll find out more on Monday. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you will. It's not what we're doing in the show, but you know, we were getting questions in chat about it, yeah. and uh, maybe, if maybe. Anyone, if anyone enhances on my piece of paper, yeah. you might see some scribbles over yeah. some things that say <laughs> Secret Layer. Uh, but... That you're gonna get more information yeah. about that. On so secret layer, maybe maybe something that might be good for for the holidays. Maybe. Maybe I don't Who know. Knows? We don't. We have no I idea. I, well, we do, but it's not, it's not neither <laughs> yeah. here nor there. No. Uh, so yeah, we are also going to have a uh, if if you missed anything on this show or you're not able to watch the whole show and or want a little more information, uh, this is all going to be shown uh, with a couple extra things next week. We're going to have a whole gift guide go up on social and the web that is going to let you do things like say, hey, I like that thing. Click, take you to where you can get it. Yeah. Uh, so that if, if 
If you're not ready to do your holiday shopping or you want a little more information, stay tuned for that next week right. where we'll have the actual digital holiday gift. Because back. as we covered at the top of the show, traditionally holiday shopping doesn't begin until after American Thanksgiving. After traditionally. Thanksgiving. Traditionally. You do you. You know but what? You do, hey, you do what makes you, makes you feel my fine. My wife already got me my Christmas present. That's true. Yeah. That's true. That's a good point. Some people, some people accomplish their Christmas shopping early. Yeah. Holiday shopping, you know? So that is actually all we have for Yeah, today. that's all we got. Uh, we are off next week because American of Thanksgiving. American Thanksgiving. Yeah. Uh, and then we will be back the week after on December 5th. We're going to have uh, Bear and Ben from the eSports team on. They're going to come on and update us on eSports yeah. stuff. So there's uh, a lot of announcements. Uh, not a lot. There's there's some more updates yeah. from eSports coming always, your way. Always updates. Always updates. Yeah. Um, just, you know, new new little things here and there. Some clarifications, some some tweaks, that sort of stuff. Uh, and then, of course, that's going to lead into Mythic Championship 7. Heard of it. Which is happening that weekend, yeah. the December 6th through 8th. And notably, that is the last Mythic Championship of the year, right, yes. Blake? Uh, it's really exciting because we are going to, you know, for the World Championship, 16 people get invited. We have determined eight of them. Yes. Previous World's wor Year's World Championship... World champion, mm -hmm. the winners of the Mythic Championships so far. Right. Uh, that's only seven. No, we've only determined seven. seven. Of them. Yeah, it will Math. be eight after Mythic Championship well, seven. Well, actually, yeah. after Mythic Championship seven, it will be all of them. That's true. So we're gonna learn the final nine at Mythic Championships. Well, and there's there's a lot uh, going on with the results of this tournament too, yep. because that uh, it also determines you know who's gonna be in the MPL next year. Who's gonna make who's, rivals? Who's gonna make rivals? Exactly. So. Uh, it's not just who's going to be qualified for the world championship. It's who is going to be in amongst the, the top Magic players in the entire world in the yeah. Magic Pro League for the partial season next year. And who's going to be chasing, chasing them, chasing that spot in the Rivals division. Yeah, there's a yeah. lot at stake for this. So we want to thank you all for tuning in. Again, if you want more information on this, uh, go back and watch our mystery stream that happened at some point in time where we unboxed a couple Maybe it's of multiple things. mystery streams. Who even knows? <laughs> Could've... October 10th. October, October 10th. 10. There we go. Our stream from October yeah. 10th. Thank you, Producer Sean. Yep. Um, or you can hold out for the digital version of the Holiday Gift Guide next week, which is going to be a little more point-and-click friendly. Um, or you can go online and uh, Google any of these products and get a little bit more information yeah. that way. Uh, but thank you for tuning in, and we will see you all in two weeks.